So, welcome to the 10th session of Electrodynamics 2020. Today we're actually going to start on a big uh, new subject, electromagnetic waves. We'll first present the waves in vacuum, we'll discuss them in matter, then we'll discuss some of the applications of the equations that we've seen. Okay, so how do we, bo how do we go about this? Well, um, as usual in electrodynamics, uh, we want to start with Maxwell's equations. What's the circumstance we're looking at here? Because we're in vacuum, there are no charges, uh, there are no currents, so the equations take a particularly simple form. We just have Gauss's law, dV is equal to zero, dV B is, as usual, equal to zero. We have also just that the curl of E plus dB dt is zero. Then we have uh, Ampere Maxwell telling us that uh, cross of B with uh, epsilon zero mu zero dV dt is equal to zero. Now, what's the characteristic of these equations? Well, the electric and the magnetic fields are coupled to one another. So in order to find explicit solutions for this, we will first try to decouple the electric and the magnetic parts. So how are we going to do this? Um, we're actually going to do some mathematical trick. We're going to take the curl of one of the equations. At least uh, we'll start with the electric field. And here, that's the strategy. We'll take the curl of the third Maxwell equations. When we take the curl of this, we end up with curl of curl of E. You can use a mathematical identity to rewrite this as the gradient of the divergence of E minus the Laplacian of E. Then on the right hand side, what we get is just the curl of dB dt. But since we assume that the fields are smooth, there's no problem in reordering the spatial and temporal derivatives. So we can take, we can take the time derivative out and then obtain time derivative of curl of B, which we then can resolve for the electric field using Ampere Maxwell. That means that we just rewrite this thing as the second time derivative of T. So you see, um, invoking Gauss's law again, in vacuum, so no, char no free charges, this term vanishes, so we obtain that the Laplacian of E, component-wise, is the second time derivative of E, component-wise. We could do precisely the same reasoning for the magnetic field, and we would obtain precisely the same equation here. And this equation is an equation which I'm sure you're familiar with from your courses on uh, Trillinger and Holfe, uh, uh, for example. You have a form with second space derivative is some proportionality constant times second time derivative. And the solutions to this equation take the form of traveling waves. So functions of x plus or minus vt, where v is the velocity of the waves. In this case here, looking at the coefficients here, we find that the velocity that's relevant for Maxwell's equations in vacuum is 1 over the square root of epsilon 0 mu 0. This is the light velocity in vacuum, which is like 300,000 um, kilometers per second, as you know uh, very well. So that means that in general, we can take solutions to Maxwell's equations in vacuum as linear combinations of free waves. So in this case here, I'm writing a simple um, uh, solution for the electric field that contains a monochromatic, that means single frequency component of this form. So it's just like a plain uh, uh, traveling wave here. And provided I fulfill the condition that this omega here is c times the modulus of this vector here, then I will solve Maxwell's equations. Okay, so this is, uh, 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 this is the way we do it. Now, just one little thing. When we write solutions like this, you might worry a little bit. This is a complex valued function. Why do we want to do that? Electrical fields are real. Well, if you want the, the real physical field, it's just going to be the real part of this thing. We just use these traveling waves here in, form, in the form of single exponentials for mathematical convenience, okay? Remembering that the actual physical fields are going to be the, uh, um, uh, uh, the real part of it. Okay, so um, maybe we can discuss uh, a few more details about the characteristics of these, uh, 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 of these waves. And for now, I will um, uh, uh, concentrate, I will focus on these monochromatic waves. Okay, monochromatic, one single color, uh, that means that in my Fourier decomposition of the electrical field, I get one frequency only, okay? Um, for simplicity, uh, let's look at propagation along the, the z-axis. 
Okay, so what I'm going to write really is the uh, electrical field as a function of z and t. Okay, it has no xy dependence, and there's going to be some vector e0 again, but now I write just kz minus omega t. Okay, and very similarly for the magnetic field, b of zt is equal to some other vector b0 with the same um, phase dependence, kz minus omega t. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, uh, Maxwell's equations impose some constraints. Okay. Um, since we have Gauss's law and div E um, is equal to zero, we also have separately that div B is equal to zero. So since these two things are true, we need that the electrical field in the z direction, so this, if you want, is the z component of this vector E0, this should vanish, right? Because you see there is no x, y dependence of this. So this is the sum of the derivative with respect to x, y, and z. So if the first two vanish, then so must the, must the third. Okay, um, so I will put these components, b0, uh, 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 z, uh, is equal to zero as well. Okay, and that means that EM waves, they are transverse to the propagation direction. Okay, there's no component of the electric and magnetic fields that goes along the direction of propagation of, uh, uh, of the field. This is not true if you're, for example, in confined spaces, but in vacuum without boundaries, this is, uh, this is true. Okay? So we can go further. Uh, if uh, we look at Faraday's law, okay, we need that the curl of E uh, is equal to minus dB uh, dt, and again, uh, uh, this gives us some conditions. Uh, so uh, uh, it, uh, it gives us that, uh, for example, if I take the space derivatives and just divide by the uh, imaginary uh, uh, unit, uh, E0 component y, this has to be, once again, I'm just using uh, uh, these forms here and here, tossing out the faces, because they're constant on both sides, this should be like this. And I should have, conversely, that the uh, other part, so, so now the E0 component along x, this should be equal to omega times uh, B0, but now in direction y. Okay, so we can summarize this uh, statement here by saying that there's a constraint on the vector B0 that it should just be proportional to the cross product between the propagation direction and the E0 vector. Okay, that's a more handy relationship, um, uh, uh, just expressing the constraints coming from Faraday's law on the monochromatic plane wave that we have here. Okay, so that tells you immediately that uh, E. Uh, is perpendicular to B, okay? And all of these two are also perpendicular to the propagation direction, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, uh, and the, uh, the amplitude, uh, uh, so the size of the vector B0 is just uh, k over omega times the size of the vector uh, E0, and this uh, k over omega, uh, just by the relationship that we, uh, uh, that we had here, okay, um, is just equal to 1 over the speed of light times uh, E0, okay? So that is trivial to generalize in an arbitrary propagation direction, okay? So for a general uh, uh, propagation direction k, or k hat as the direction, what we have are these 
monochromatic electromagnetic waves, E of R and T, is equal to uh, E0 with E to the I K dot R minus omega T, going in a direction that I'll call um, n hat, and B of R and T is equal to E0 over C with E to the I, so the same phase, K dot R minus omega T, okay, with K hat crossed into uh, N hat vector, okay, and this is uh, also uh, just equal to 1 over C with K hat crossed into E itself. Okay, uh, with the transversality condition that uh, the n hat vector is perpendicular to the propagation direction. Okay, uh, so um, in, if you want, the physical fields would just be the real parts of these uh, uh, of these things, but you know you can easily extract that uh, uh, from here. Okay, so that's the way electromagnetic waves look in uh, uh, in vacuum. Okay, now these waves uh, carry some energy and momentum. So how can we characterize that? The, uh, 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 the energy density in uh, electro magnetic fields, you remember this was the little u, which was a half times epsilon zero e squared plus one over mu zero b squared. Okay. Um, now here we have a slight simplification because we already have seen that the amplitude of the magnetic field is one over c squared, the amplitude squared of the electrical field. And this is just uh, epsilon zero mu zero um, e squared. Okay, so um, so essentially, um, so in an uh, uh, EM uh, wave, in one of these monochromatic waves, we have that uh, this u is just epsilon zero um, e squared. And again, the E is going to be the real part of the intensity that I that I have here. So I'll just take the real part. I'll get the cosine uh, uh, of this. Um, maybe there's a phase in the original E zero. We can put a general phase in there if uh, um, um, if you if you want. This thing would be epsilon zero. This E zero squared times the cosine of k dotted into r minus omega t plus possibly a phase that you might have in the definition of the original uh, E0. Okay, so that's the uh, quantity of energy that's carried in the wave. Um, you'll remember also that we discussed the, the pointing vector. And this pointing vector was 1 over mu0 E cross B. In the case of these uh, 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 monochroma monochromatic plane waves, um, this is going to become uh, just the, the what, we, what we had here. So there's going to be a, a C times uh, epsilon zero E zero squared with the cosine squared of again the same argument K dot R minus omega T plus delta Okay, in the direction of, so what do I want? I want to do the E cross the B, so it's going to be N crossed into uh, K cross N. But because these are all um, mutually perpendicular, I get simply that this cross product goes back in the direction of K. So the pointing vector for a monochromatic plane wave is just C times U times the propagation direction vector. 
Okay, and the physical interpretation of this is completely clear. Um, uh, you remember the pointing vector represents the uh, the energy flux per unit uh, per unit uh, area. Essentially, what this represents is an energy density u flowing at velocity c in the direction k hat. Okay, so it's really what you would have intuitively written down from the very beginning had you been asked to guess uh, what this uh, what this was. Now, in terms of the momentum, again, things are quite uh, quite simple. Uh, because you'll remember that the momentum density was proportional to the pointing vector, 1 over c squared uh, times s, and in this case it's just u over c with k hat. Okay, so again, really, really quite, uh, uh, quite simple. Now, the, uh, 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 the shape, of course, oscillates in time because of these factors here. So if you want the uh, 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 the average of the value of the field would be, say, the time average of this over a certain number, a certain integer number of cycles as the wave goes by. Okay, so uh, we can just mention that briefly. So time average uh, over, say, uh, an, uh, uh, over a single full cycle. Okay, so uh, uh, so you remember. Let's uh, let's write uh, let's write this average as this angular bracket here. If I have an average of cos squared of something here, uh, you'll remember from your uh, thing that this is going to average to one half. So um, the average energy in the wave is just going to be epsilon zero over two with the e0 squared. The time average of the pointing vector, similarly, we'll pick up this factor of uh, 2, c epsilon 0 uh, over 2 e0 squared k. And the average momentum, similarly, same factor of 2. Again, the vector here, uh, I've got epsilon 0 over 2c e0 squared in the direction of propagation. Okay. Um, what's called the intensity of the wave is the average power um, per unit time per unit area. Okay. So I is, by definition, the time average of this. So this is C epsilon 0 over 2, E0 squared. OK? You can also uh, talk about, uh, well, because, uh, because electromagnetic waves carry momentum, um, when they hit surfaces, they apply a certain amount of pressure Okay, so there's a notion of a radiation pressure. Which is the, the uh, momentum uh, transfer per unit area per unit time. So this radiation pressure P is um, uh, the delta P per unit area. Sorry, this is an A per unit time. And the uh, momentum transfer is going to be G times the area uh, with uh, C delta T. And then all of that divided by uh, A delta T like we had. So this just becomes epsilon 0 over 2, um, E0 squared, which is the intensity divided by the speed of light. OK, so, so this is just the uh, 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 kind of most simple example of the radiation pressure that we have. OK, so these are just basics of electromagnetic waves specialized to the case of propagation in vacuum.